Hey, welcome back to another episode of Patrick and I talking about being a disciple-making parent. Now, the last time that we met with you guys, we talked that we would be at youth camp. And uh, when we were at youth camp, it just got busier than we <laughs> anticipated, and we weren't able to come to you with a video. And if you were really looking forward to that, we apologize. Absolutely. But we are here today, and we want to talk about having authentic faith as a parent. And so what does that mean to have an authentic faith as a parent? Well, in the context of our book that we've been reading, and hopefully you've been reading along, is uh, being a disciple-making parent, authentic Faith means that you are taking care of yourself. You're growing mm -hmm. in your faith. Uh, you spend time daily uh, in God's word, in prayer, and, um, and you're doing that in such a way that you're showing your children what's going on as you do that, you know? And so one of the things we just want to encourage you to do is your children can, can suck a lot of your time, whether you have young children, obviously that happens, preschoolers, elementary, but even uh, I know if you have students uh, mm -hmm. older in middle school or high school, they can have a lot of questions maybe first thing in the, in the day or at some part in the day. And if that's when you plan to do your quiet time, uh, it can just get hectic. And so the, the main thing we're, that I want to share with you in this is to make sure that you have a priority of that time that you are keeping on a daily basis. And you're making that your priority that you don't lose because that's part of having that authentic faith and taking care of yourself is even though the home might get busy, making sure that that's part of your priority and how you start or end or whatever mm -hmm. part of the day you do it. Um, and so we just want to encourage you because, again, even in the midst of this corona, things are a little slower. We still feel like our homes can be somewhat hectic or our day can be busy and we can lose traction of taking care of our faith. Absolutely. And, you know, actually, I want to bring up 2 Timothy 1, 14 or uh, 1, 5. And so, because uh, it goes exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. here. So this is Paul, of course, writing to Timothy. And it says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. So when it comes to an authentic faith, we first have to have an authentic faith. Um, and so we are going to be, the, as we talked in the weeks past, the main disciplers of, um, of our students and of our children. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of want to just share a story um, that happened during coronavirus that really blessed my heart, uh, seeing kind of interactions day in and day out. So during the coronavirus, we, at one point, all our staff were having to be at home, and we're having to work from home. So we're doing these Zoom meetings, and we're, we're calling each other, and we're working, and we're trying to schedule and figure things out and just pray through the, uh, really, the crisis that was there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I love during that time is I would come in sometimes to grab a cup of coffee uh, like I have right here, you know, to start my day and to kind of keep rolling. And uh, I would see my wife at our kitchen table mm. and she had her Bible open. Um, and we have a two-year-old little girl, Piper Joe, And so she's up there and she's just playing and she's up there trying to have a, like her little storybook Bible open. Right. And she doesn't know how to read yet. But it was just such a blessing to me of saying, oh, my wife is taking the time to really invest in our children. And she's doing it in a very uh, meaningful way of saying, this is important enough for me to really dive in and to make sure that I'm being fed so that I can feed my children. Um, and sometimes I think that we forget that. Sometimes I think that, okay, if we go to Sunday and Wednesday, that's a part of us being fed. But that's just a part, a small piece of the pie of where we really need to be. Yeah. We need to own our faith and take it in our own hands. And what that means is, is begin to really uh, dive into the Word and to grow that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know a lot of times we can think sometimes, you know, the War Room movies have come out and the prayer room is great. And I think that we really do need to engage in that. But what I don't want to do is, is just be in the prayer room and never show our kids and our students what it looks like to actually have an authentic faith. Because a lot of times, the biggest right. question, specifically when students graduate high school, is, you know, my parents talked about this all the time, right. but I really never saw them do it as much. And so that's like, do I want to be like that? I mean, we hear the, right. the, the, the talk about it, but not really doing it as much. Right. And so my encouragement, really our encouragement for one of the encouragements for today, is for us to do, yes, the prayer closet, to continue to pray in private right. and to bring our request before the Lord, confess to Him. But also when we're studying, studying Scripture, um, to do that in open areas so that our kids can be invited in. And that takes us, too, to be willing to be able to say, hey, come in and let's start doing our quiet time. 
Um, and so, Casey, what, what age group do you think would be a really good time for them to begin to engage with that soap and kind of uh, scripture of saying, hey, I'm going to bring you into my quiet time to show you what this looks like? What do you think is a good age for that? Man, I've really seen third and fourth grade do well with that. Um, I know one, my daughter was in fourth grade this year, and um, she's really able to do that. But maybe even a little even younger, uh, first and second graders. But like you said, even with Piper, um, you know, they can see it mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe model it. But I think if you start including them in, in first, second grade, they're able to. But really, maybe they're along able to do alongside of you right. when it comes to third and fourth grade and then even older for sure uh, they should do it so I think including them in those ages grades around that is you know they can mimic you for a little while but they can own it at a certain part and you got to have those transitional years where they're guiding from this to that absolutely um, in those grades and so uh, let me also talk about you know sometimes as parents we we want our kids to be doing this, and so we create, mm -hmm. we create a lot of rules in our house, in our family, and uh, maybe we ourselves are following a big list of rules. And right. one thing that reminds me of is a little bit of the, the Pharisees. I mean, the Pharisees had these rules, these faith rules, and they were good rules, oh, yeah. but they followed them in such a way that when Jesus met them, he's just like, mm -hmm. you're missing the heart of it. Mm. You're missing the, the real truth behind it. And I just don't want us to be guilty or me to be guilty as a parent of that, of having such a rule of maybe a quiet time every day uh, t for our kids or even for us that we're missing the heart behind it. We're missing really Jesus in the midst of it. Because mm -hmm. I know from experience, I can sit down and do my quiet time and get very little out of it. But to be able to say I did it, you know, I accomplished mm -hmm. it or I was a, uh, I, I followed Jesus uh, by reading my Bible today and I read it, but I wasn't really seeking to meet Jesus and to mm -hmm. hear from the Holy Spirit. And yes. I think when we do it, when we do it because we feel like we have to, and maybe when we force our kids to do things for their faith because they have to, that becomes a pharisaical in a way. And uh, I just want to remind us to, to always seek the heart of God behind everything that we do. And mm -hmm. we want our kids to do that because uh, like Patrick mentioned, when we have these seniors in high school that graduate, you know, we don't want them to be saying things like, I don't really know why I want to continue doing this. I, I saw the difference that it made in my parents, or it was such a strict environment that I lived under. I want freedom from that. Mm -hmm. And when that's the case, that's what we hear, you know, college students that just break out and live um, a different lifestyle, maybe for a while. Some come right. back, but some don't. And um, I, I know in my life, in my home, I want my kids to, to own this journey themselves mm -hmm. and then just to continue modeling that. And there's no perfect scenario or environment that creates that. Mm -hmm. But we have to kind of be evaluating and checking that out in our own heart. Mm -hmm. are, we, are we doing things just because we feel like we have to? Or are we really doing it because we want to be disciples of Jesus? We want to follow him. And then we want to see our kids mm -hmm. having authentic faith. Because that's what we've been talking about this whole time is us and ourselves having authentic faith right. that we see our kids pick up and have authentic, authentic faith themselves um, because they chose it themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you're spot on. And here's, here's one thing a really wise guy had uh, shared with me. Um, and it has to do with the process compared to the discipleship and the ministry that go into, um, that we really are able to engage in. When we begin to focus so much on the process, mm -hmm. we take some of that spirit-led ministering right. out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so my question is not for, or really my encouragement is not for you not to have any process at all, but it's what are you depending on? Yeah. What Are you going to depend on, hey, this is how I've done it in the past, and, and you know what, this is working really well, and so I'm going to do this X, Y, Z, and, uh, and then you know, that's the process I'm going, and that's what I'm dependent on. Right. Or are you going to say, okay, this process has worked well. We're going to continue to pray through this. We're going to continue to minister through this. And you know what? Maybe we might have to change the process. I know that makes us uncomfortable right. because we would like to know really black and white of saying, okay, this is right. This is wrong. This is what we need to do. This is what we don't need to do. Um, and what I'm learning as, as kind of I'm growing is that there's a whole lot more gray area in that. Yeah. And that the Holy Spirit can move and change what that process looks like really for our, our own good and our kids' own good. For sure. So uh, we really enjoyed having this time together to kind of just talk about authentic faith 
And it's a challenging thing. It's something sure. that's, that's meant a lot to us, and it's challenging us in this process as well. And so next um, video that we shoot in a couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at loving your spouse and liking your children. And so I'm like, uh-oh, that might be pushing a little bit of a button there. Right. But we're excited to continue to walk through this time with Absolutely. you guys um, and to partner with you as parents. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's our heart, both yes. Casey and I heart here, sure. is that we want to partner with you to help equip you um, and, and your students and your children to ultimately have this authentic faith. And so, like I said, the book that we're reading is Disciple Making Parent. We're going to be looking at loving your spouse and liking your children. And so in a couple of weeks, we'll see you next time.